welcome to another episode of the Biohacking Beauty Podcast brought to you by Yangu Skincare. In this episode, I am going to host uh, Daniela Schenker. We discuss different therapies for skin rejuvenation, such as at-home microneedling and soft wave therapy. She also explains why we should care for our skin sooner. Her at-home approach to microneedling, the downside of collagen overdosing, working on your skin from the inside out, and how to improve your skin barrier. Daniela uh, Schenker is one of my personal people that I'm really fascinated with in this industry of ours, that biohacking, longevity, skin anti-aging industry. She's a former ICU nurse uh, for 20 years and uh, a nursing instructor. And she turned uh, basically to a beauty biohacker and health visionary about 10 years ago. She's optimizing beauty, health, and well-being, and that is her passion. Um, and her uh, facility, the Frisch Institute, which is located in, in Switzerland, is really a cutting-edge uh, facility, which I can tell you it's, it's a pleasure to work with them, um, both professionally and personally. What you will learn from today's episode Aside from how she approaches longevity of skin and, and, and skin optimization, you will learn about a new way to think about beauty, about skin biohacking. You will learn what are some of the better habits to have rather than some of the things that are intervention that she prefers not to do but will do if it's, it's a must. Um, so kind of that hierarchy of what we should do most often to, to only when it's super necessary. And you will um, definitely become a wiser um, skin biohacking, biohacker or a biohacking you know, um, enthusiast in general after this podcast. Before we start today's podcast, I would like to remind you that this podcast is growing. Uh, if you, you know, give us a, a, a review or subscribe to the podcast so i would really appreciate it if you took about two seconds out of your day to subscribe to our podcast and to leave a, a review on either apple podcasts or spotify last thing before we start i'm reminding you that this podcast is brought to you by young goose the biohacking uh, skincare and what we aim to do at young goose is to lower the functional age of the skin we can do it through uh, basically activating genes that are responsible for youthful function. And then we can ask the skin to do specific things, whether it is repair wrinkles, sunspots, um, pigmentation, um, laxity, acne, rosacea. And we, the skin does it much, much better because it functions like a younger skin. If you would like to learn more about Young Goose, you could go to our website, which is www.younggoose.com or visit our Instagram page, young underscore goose underscore skincare. Now, without further ado, please welcome Daniela Schenker. Daniela, welcome to the Biohacking Beauty Podcast. I'm very, very appreciative and very excited to, to have you on. Thank you for having me on. I'm also very excited. <laughs> yeah, so Daniela, we met... Basically, you guys uh, approached us to carry a product in uh, Switzerland. And at the time, I wasn't aware of what an amazing and, and innovative institute uh, you guys are. But through working together and, and trying to understand what you guys are doing, I've become so, so impressed. I had to have you on and, and talk to you about your, your philosophy and what you guys are doing uh, there, which, which is quite innovative. Uh, if I if I may say so, um, are you perceiving your, yourself as innovative, as as cutting edge, or how do you perceive yourself? Oh, let's put it that way. I think we started basically biohacking when nobody was even talking about biohacking, and it uh, my business just grow and grow further into this direction. And by now we have a clinic where, together with a regenerative doctor, we have all kinds of biohacking stuff in our clinic, like a hyperbaric chamber and all of this 
And I'm also working together with Neotis Care. Neotis Care is one of the biggest longevity platforms here in Europe. Now, what they want to do is a one-stop fit all where you can go with all your longevity questions. They have all the specialized doctors where you can get your knowledge. So, and we're like a branch of them also now. Wow. So how did it start? Like, how long has, have you guys been around? Um, what's kind of the, the, the history of, of the um, Frisch Institute, Forever Beautiful? What, what, how did it come about? I think it come about, I mean, uh, I'm by profession, I'm an ICU nurse. I was an ICU nurse mm-hmm. for 20 years, and I was also a nurse trainer, and I was also a Vounce wound specialist and um, so at that time basically when I still was working in the clinic um, they were basically drying wounds and it was then when the voiced uh, wound treatment moist wound treatment just came up you know where you basically close up a wound and have a humid um, a humidity towards the skin and mm-hmm. we discovered that wounds heal better with that and so as I was the wound specialist in that time I discovered that wounds that we couldn't close for years in weeks they were closing so that actually opened up wow. my interest in skin because I said okay if you change the microenvironment for the cell the cell starts behaving properly or differently and it does what it's supposed yeah. to do and uh, so that's how my interest in interest in skin started. That is now, oh God, <laughs> 20 years ago. And since 10 years, I have a clinic that is specialized in skin. And mm-hmm. what we also do is we're not doing just skin. I mean, I don't have to tell you if you want to treat the skin, you have to treat the body as a whole. You have to have the proper nutrition. You have to move. You have to sleep enough. You have to set your circle, circadian mm-hmm. rhythm. And then on top comes to skin treatment yeah and we're sp- i mean i think sorry <laughs> go ahead no and we're basically now specialized in micro needling that is my main uh, thing that i'm doing i'm the trainer for dermapen for switzerland so i train um doctors and aesthetic nurses in micro needling um, because that was something that i already discovered in the clinic for myself and it was one of or basically one of the few anti-aging treatments for the skin that just made sense to me. Yeah, and, and you know, I think looking at Dermapen specifically and looking at, at you know, skin health as a whole, um, as you said, there, first of all, we got to have a healthy human being, right? Um, especially if we create um, any kind of injury, any kind of stimulation, we have to, we are, if we are the artist, we have to improve the canvas, if you would. So I completely understand that. Um, so what, are, what would you say are, aside from Dermapen, what are some of the core uh, services, products that you guys offer? What are the most popular things that you, that you deal with on a, on a regular basis? So what I basically usually do is besides setting up uh, food, uh, sports and looking for circadian circadian rhythm and looking at supplements that people might need to improve their overall health, I basically Mm -hmm. look what the skin needs and the skin has to be fat. You have to fertilize it or it needs certain substances to work properly. And even with microneedling, it's like that. I mean... That's what I basically teach. You never, never needle a skin if you haven't treated it with something like a retinol. Mm -hmm. That is your cell division vitamin. There is no, basically you have way way less cell division if you don't pre-treat your skin with something like a retinoid. So that is the base Mm -hmm. when you do treatments that you do set them up properly. And every other treatment that we do uh, will react better when you pre-treat the skin. You will just get nicer Um, results with it. Yeah, so I agree with you. And, you know, it, as, as I uh, love that you talk about often when you, when you do informational videos, etc., it goes, yeah, we, we definitely retinol is like one of the major things that you can do to, to improve results. But, but you go with your understanding, with your, with your philosophy, much, much deeper. You know, you, you made a, a video about uh, senescent cells, Yes. not long ago and yes. what i love about your philosophy is the fact that you 
make sure that the information available to your to the cells as far as how they regenerate as far as the as you said the fuel the 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 nutrients that the cells can have in order to to perform in their best way it's all kind of coming together so when you're doing that regenerative treatment we're getting the best results out of it are there other yeah no no just ask your questions <laughs> are, are there other um so aside from from uh, uh dermapen which by the way there is another uh, uh, connection here because actually our good friend Joel is the head of Dermapen in the United, in the United States. Um, so it's fun to see that we have those, those connections. Um, aside from Dermapen, what other uh, modalities are, are used in order for skin rejuvenations? In, in in your clinic mm -hmm. so okay besides of peels and all the normal stuff we are using mm -hmm. a red light therapy for 10 years uh, 10 years ago almost nobody even wow. know what it was doing basically so but we started already then so we also try to get the best out of our results by combining treatments we combine it with red light therapy we have a hyperbaric chamber now um, we have even a counter pulsation you know so something that basically produces more, more nitric oxide and opens up your vessels so um we really work in a very holistic way with the skin. So, and every treatment gets gets basically just the optimized combinations. Wow, that's amazing! And it's funny to see that the you know the conventional beauty industry is only catching up to this now. Oh, yeah. um, you know, ten years ago, I, because you know, I've been dealing with red light therapy for yeah for you know over ten years, almost fifteen years, and. It's funny to see that where 15 years ago or 10 years ago, you really needed to explain to people that you're not out of your mind to <laughs> just shine red light therapy, <laughs> red light on the skin and hope to get some results. And now it's like ubiquitous, you know, oh, yeah, for sure it does that. But now we have other things that people look at us a little bit weird and say, you know, are, are you sure that this is this is going to work as well? Because you deal with, uh, for example, Softwave or... Um, yes some some big machinery you know I very do. very uh interesting treatments that are that are also uh kind of groundbreaking so let's talk about some of those um so how often do you soft wave what is really soft wave because i saw you doing a treatment like you posted about doing a treatment to a male i saw like not long ago um and he was doing a lot of faces and and i was like dude you, there's nothing there to do faces about. So can you explain a little bit about what it is and, and what people can get with it? Yeah. Softwave for me is a solution when 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 basically um, the skin is already very loose. So if you haven't uh -huh. treated your skin on time, because a lot of people want to age gracefully till they decide, mm -hmm. oh, they don't want to age gracefully anymore and they want to do treatments. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest problem basically for me. So softwave is a treatment when it's already going a little bit uphill and you have really loose skin it's a focused ultrasound basically what it does it's very aggressive it burns little lines into your collagen and by mm -hmm. basically disturbing uh, not disturbing destroying a little bit of collagen you are have to rebuild collagen so it's mm -hmm. it's it's if we want to take it like that it's also on a hormetic principle i mean there's almost no system in the body that gets better uh if you don't stress it and it, it's it's a stress for the skin and um, it is not the most comfortable treatment as you can imagine because it has quite a high temperature to coagulate collagen and yeah. um Yes, I, I do it really when there's already laxity in the skin. If, uh, if I have a way to treat the skin differently, for example, when somebody is younger, I would definitely go with a good skincare and consistency is the key here. And, uh, yeah. of course, uh, sun protection. And I don't mind the sun at all. I love the sun and the, what it does for the circadian rhythm. And then the yeah. third thing would be I would basically really early start with microneedling. Microneedling is a low-dose stressor for the skin, and it just improves yeah. the skin on so many levels. Yeah, so it does. People who had microneedling with me, I have clients there with me for 10 years. They are like 50 when they started with me, and they do a microneedling every four to six weeks. They're now 60. 
they they look amazing. They have great skin, and everybody's asking them where they did the facelift. You know what I mean? So they just look. Yeah. They don't even need something like Softwave. They started in a in an at a good point where they, you don't have to go that aggressive. How do you explain it to? First of all, I I couldn't agree more. Um, but how do you explain? Um, let's say someone is coming to you at the right age, 30, 40, whatever that age is, is, is as far as uh, you know, the skin is concerned. How do you explain to them that they are now going on a 20, 30 year adventure of keeping their skin at, their, at the best shape? Um, because most people, you know, we, we only, as you said, we only care about things when, when they are in front of us, uh, burning and we have to change them. We care about them less when they are, when they're, uh, further away from us. So, uh, do you have a, a, a an interesting way of like of, of explaining, um, to people that they should care sooner rather than later? Um, do I have an interesting way? I think luckily today, the, even the young people are very aware of their skin mm-hmm. health. And I think something, it has to do a little bit what they see around. I mean, there are all these 50, 60 year olds that desperately try to look better. And they do that by putting fillers in their face using Botox. And I don't say that it's a bad thing, huh? And skilled hands, that might be a good thing. But it, mm-hmm. what people now discovered, it won't change anything. It won't make you look good, no, it won't, will make you look younger. Your skin still stays old. And people see that. Yeah. They see all these people running around with their facelifts and still looking old and not good. So I think there is a big awareness now that people want to start early. And um, I guess I'm quite a good role model. I'm not the youngest anymore. And um, <laughs> usually people come in and say, I'm going to want to do that, what you do. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah. Can you say, yeah. They, 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 I think maybe you will have, uh, you can just have a picture of uh, the recent concert of Madonna behind oh, you. Yeah. In the, in the, uh, and, and people will understand the hint. Yeah, for sure. Um, what is your opinion about at-home microneedling? It, it, it has become so popular right now. Uh, you can buy it on you know, Amazon or, or whatever. Uh, obviously, um, we can talk about the differences between in office and at home. But what is your general approach to at home microneedling? I love it. I was basically starting to teach people about at home microneedling ten years ago, and mm-hmm. I do that. I a lot of uh, doctors or even estheticians that I teach, they're afraid that it will take away work from them. I said, no, it's the opposite around. It basically improves your result because if somebody is trained well, and I train all of my clients who do microneedling at home, and mm-hmm. I encourage them to do it because it's like having the little jog in between before you go to the marathon. When you come to, into my clinic, yeah. you're basically doing the marathon and they do the little jogs in between. So the skin reacts way better. They have a very nice result and they know how to use it properly. And that's the bit difference on my website i basically also have um how you say a a, a department what says beauty at home because it goes into this Mm -hmm. direction i always encourage people to do at home what is doable at at home and i think it's a big trend that is going to come up people are going to do more and more at home not just microneedling i mean a lot of people now have uh, red light devices i have an ultrasound at uh, in my clinic, it's a professional ultrasound for dermatologists. You can treat uh, several skin conditions with it. But a lot of my clients really have an ultrasound like that at home. Now, it is a device, mm-hmm. depends on which one you take. It's in between 20 and 40,000. And you would think, wow, you're taking a such expensive device at home. But yes, of course, why not? People don't even blink when they buy a car for that money, but they wouldn't invest it in their health and skin. Why not? So I think it's yeah. it's a big uh, field that is going to be bigger and bigger, and I think education is the key here. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it's it's funny that um, in in the United States, as you know, what I what I love to observe in America is the way uh, of which um, you know, mark since the American market is the way that it is. Um, wording and phrases, as far as marketing wording and phrases have become a part of the language. And um, y- if you talk to anyone about, you know, buying a house or buying a car, 
um, it is normally like a, a, a following sentence is like, this is the biggest purchase you'll ever make in your life, or this is the second biggest purchase when they talk about a car. Yes. But the funny thing is, it is not because you're going to buy a new one in like three years, you know, either a house or a car, whatever that is. We, we get used to whatever we, we, we have. And with our skin, it is the opposite. It's like if you wanna if you wanna keep whatever you have, you have to invest early and well both your time and money to 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 stay with what you have and not vice versa. And I feel like we are not we're not conditioned to to understand that on a more emotional, like deeper level. Yeah. I think what also happens is people really underestimate the importance of skin. They think, oh, it's just an organ and it ages and it's just the look that changes. But I mean, the problem, and we do know that, is the inflammation and the senescent cells. And just given by the organ size, skin is your biggest organ, you will understand how important skin is. It will impact your overall health. And if you can make that clear to people, they will start taking care about their skin. And I mean, there was a study quite a while ago, I think the patient group was quite small, but what they did is they basically measured the inflammation markers. And it wasn't the inflammation markers that you usually measure at the doctor, not the CRP and all this stuff. It was the interleukins and the tumor necrosis factors mm -hmm. and that. They measured it and then they set the group basically on a really basic ceramide body lotion and the ceramide body lotion basically was just closing up the skin barrier and after three months they measured the blood inflammation levels again and they all went lower i mean that is amazing just by using a simple skin barrier repair yeah there's there is so much to unpack in what you just said first of all i don't know if you you saw i sent you an email after you you uh you um posted about senescent cells oh, uh, so because sorry. again I, I what oh no i haven't seen that i'm sorry about that no no that's okay but i i was so excited that that again we're talking about the same thing and i have a lecture that that is probably my the most popular lecture i do which is how you know the skin as we grow older drives aging in the body instead of just being yes. affected by aging in yes. the body because yes. it creates again inflammation it creates the skin is a also a communication organ to our brain as far as Uh, what are the stressors in the environment and how the, the brain should prepare the body for those stressors. And as we grow older and the skin becomes inflamed, becomes senescent, which it creates chronic inflammation, it starts to confuse the brain, it starts to overload the system, etc. Yes, definitely. So, and that's only one, one aspect of it. You talked about, you know, repairing the skin barrier. What we have uh, started to communicate Uh, gently but but uh, firmly, if you would, uh, with our audience is about something called leaky skin, which which yes. is exactly like leaky. You know, it started with leaky gut, right? Yes, Everyone yes. knew about leaky gut. Yes. If we if we talk about, by the way, if we talk about things that people looked at you like you're crazy 10, 20 years ago, it's talking about <laughs> leaky gut. That, then then people, excuse my pun, were able to digest it. After that. You know, we started hearing about leaky brain and how, you know, things that go through the blood-brain barrier that they're not supposed to, they go through. But now I think uh, people who are, who are understanding that really should start looking at a leaky skin because, and let me see if, if you resonate with what I'm saying. Obviously, it's very important to um, repair your skin barrier with products. But what happens when we don't care, take good care of our skin, our skin is also responsible for creating our skin barrier. And if yes. our skin is not optimized, what will happen is that it will create a poor skin barrier. So it's kind of relationship between us maintaining it and us maintaining like optimal skin health in order for us to, to, to be able to create a good skin barrier. Yes, and I think at that point we can come back to the microenvironment for the cell, what is mm -hmm. so important. And I think that's one of the biggest problems when we age. The microenvironment for the skin cell changes and changes in a very unfavorable way. I always tell my clients, we're like a pond that is getting, that the water is not flowing anymore. It's getting more dirty and muddy and the cells can't communicate anymore. And uh, they communicate in a wrong way. The messages don't uh, get the right way. 
way to the other cell and uh, yeah. there were just like misunderstandings. So if you don't have the microenvironment to let a sin, skin cell grow, it's like a little bit like the wound. I mean, the 20 years ago when we tried to repair skin by drying the skin surface, that's what mm -hmm. they did. They put some kind of iodine and dried it. So this is like expecting a plant to grow green leaves by drying it out. I mean, it's basically the same. So the cell needs a good microenvironment, also the cell underneath uh, or the, the skin underneath, the dermis, basically with the extracellular matrix, gives the microenvironment to the soft top cell and there that's where a lot of things go wrong with the glycation with the reduced autophagy with the senescent cells with the inflammation we don't know what is first or is it the inflammation that drives senescence or is it the senescence that drives inflammation so it's the chicken egg question so there are so many yeah. uh, things that's why we also have to work from the inside and then when you work on the outside you will get nice results People who try yeah. just and to I... fix the skin on top from a certain age, that it works on a young age, but from a certain age, I don't think it will work. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. Yeah, we should uh, take care first and foremost on the inside. And the reason is because, you know, a, we will not be able to uh, create a healthy skin if, if, we're, if we're not healthy. That's number one. That's for sure. Yeah. Going to the skin, creating a good environment in the skin, 100% maintenance. Uh, being very, very, you know, very, very particular about what you put on your skin, what you, how you treat it, etc. Being consistent for sure. Something that I feel like maybe because you live in those beautiful mountains in Switzerland is is um, is less um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can see it from the window. Um, it is less uh, impactful as far as environment goes. Uh, you know, a statistic that that is starting to be shared around is the fact that if you live in a, in a polluted city, you're going to get more uh, ex ex extrinsic aging, aging from the environment, as far as your skin is concerned, from pollution, then you would get, and by the way, from blue light and pollution, so from artificial light and pollution, then you would get from, you know, UV radiation. So I think that's another part of the environment. So we have like the internal environment, the, the actual environment of the skin, and then external environment. And they all you know, what is the chicken and what is the egg? And does it even matter? Right now, we already have an omelet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. But for the environmental stressors, I think uh, the, the antioxidants that you put on top on your skin, I think they're really important. It's one of the things mm -hmm. besides retinol that has to be on your skin. And uh, I mean, you produced a lot of... Uh, I was basically waiting for your skin, Caroline, because I, I'm... <laughs> I'm uh, I'm uh, working with the hallmarks of aging and I translated them into skin quite a while ago already because I follow all the longevity science and I thought, why is nobody taking that up? Why are they all just working on collagen, elastin, collagen, elastin? It's so boring. Why is not anybody looking what happens with the DNA, what happens with the autophagy, what happens with the senescent cells, what happens with the inflammation in the skin? So, and basically till today, there's not a lot of data. There is a little bit coming up now, but I still think even for microneedling, I'm frustrated. I wish some scientists would hear me and would really look if microneedling works on that. I mean, there was a little study that microneedling, at least radio frequency microneedling, reduced um, senescent melanocytes. So I think it definitely does that. You can see that by the improvement of the skin, but I think there has to be more research into this direction. I agree. I agree. I think, you know, um, it is so, you know, before, actually you, you raised a really good point, but just to address like, why is no one, you know, looking into it? It's because the money is not really in the money in aesthetics is really in the mm -hmm. end results. And until we're not, go we're not going to have like the consumer understanding the connection between their, you know, their brain health and their skin or, or however they perform at work, whatever is really important to them, you know, however, you know, their mental health and their, the state of their skin cells, all of those, I don't know if, if we're going to get a lot of, a lot of um, research in that field, but you did mention the way that uh, radio frequency, micro needling, and we can go into more like, let's call it regenerative uh, stimu stimuli. Um, and how they affect uh, cellular skin health. But I have a question maybe from the other side, from the other side of that. Mm -hmm. um, when we create, 
you know, more intense stimulation that can create some kind of scarring, scar tissue in the skin, whether it is radio frequency, whether, whether it is soft wave, whether it, whether it is um, any type of, like of ultrasound of heat that is radiated into the skin. What is your approach as far as, and I know you said, you know, you kind of addressed it before because you said, look, if I can avoid it, I'm going to avoid it. But what is your approach between that and the longevity of our skin? Because we're kind of, it's not, it's, it's not, uh, we can't really create a win-win, right? Like we can, we can create some results that, um, that will look good now, but we might pay for later. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is your approach Mm -hmm. as far as this? I'm always looking very carefully at the skin, especially when I do more damaging treatments while I focus ultrasound, because I'm very aware. I mean, that's the funny thing because people are always talking about more collagen, but basically more collagen at some point is a scar. So we Mm -hmm. have to always be careful that we don't produce scar tissue. And I think when people are overusing this treatment, you can see that. You can just see that the skin quality goes down. So you have to be very careful how often you use treatments like that. And I'm very strict with my clients. When they come, they have a soft wave. And of course, they look in the mirror. They love the results. They're like basically (laughs) two months later and say, I want more of that. And then I have to say, No, because that's my responsibility to say no there. And even with microneedling, there are people who would basically love to needle every week. And I said to them, no, we have to stimulate the skin. It's like with sports. I mean, when you do uh, sports and you do really tough sports every day, five hours, it will just age you. You're doing it in a certain amount. It's the hormesis principle. Too much of it. It's not a good thing to less of it. It's not a good thing. It's the same with collagen stimulation. You will always have to find the middle way. Um, and you have to be very responsible. You have to be very aware that collagen is not just a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because um, I heard someone describe hormesis as what doesn't kill you make you stronger. And I was like, no, that's absolutely not hormesis. Hormesis is a little bit of what would kill you if you did a lot of it will make you stronger, but a lot of it would damage you. You know, yes. that is, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the worst way to describe hormesis is this endless, endless, um, uh, this endless uh, parabola of, of just go until you're, uh, if you're not dead, that's fine. Um, do you, I don't know if you know, do you know we own the trademark for the word hormesis in, in, in aesthetics? Really? <laughs> that's yeah. <a> good one. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a funny story behind it. There's a supplement company that is called Hormesis, so we never used it in order not to, uh, not to, uh, you know, butt heads with them. But we, at least, we have the trademark. Yes, um, skincare does Hormesis. I mean, retinols do, do Hormesis with the skin, basically. And if you use them oh, in yeah. a good way, that's basically what you do: to stress the skin a little bit, and then you get more cell turnover. In the case of retinols. Yeah, I think when we approached retinols, because that was one of the first products we've we've looked into and, and came out with, and um, I can tell you that some of our more radical uh, uh, members of our science group, which are like, no, we should only deal with like super cutting edge ingredients, etc., I was I was always of the opinion that we will learn that there is something more fundamental as far as longevity that is retinol is involved in. And what we can see and we, we are starting to get vindicated is that retinol actually also right now we see it in the in as far as like uh, to, um, supplement, supplementing on retinol in the brain, but we can see retinol interacting with the mTOR pathway, which we talk a lot about. That's kind of the the the, the lock, the locking mechanism that that we can open and kind of start to reverse senescent cells, which are kind of older um, cells that are that are that are not contributing anymore. So um, we are starting to see what you are saying that in the end. What, what we know through practice, through, through our personal anecdotal experience to create positive change in the skin uh, that involves longevity but also looking better really drives in the end also those intercellular mechanisms of longevity. Mm-hmm. It's true, yeah. Ref- retinol is really important, not just for cell division, also for cell differentiation. Yeah. So... You know, a lot of the, the, the questions that we get 
uh, is what are your plans for the future? What are you coming up with? What are you, you know, what, what are you researching now? Which is a f- good question. Unfortunately, 99% of the time we can't talk about what we're doing now. But, uh, yes. but th- that's a question that I, I like when people ask. So what is your you know, kind of plans for the future? What, what would you like uh, the Frisch Institute to kind of to, to do in the future that, that, that you're looking at. You did mention hyperbarics, uh, hyperbaric chambers, which uh, we are in agreement that it's, it's a big part of longevity, the future of longevity um, and skin health. But what else are you seeing in the future? What else I see in the future? So what I'm waiting for basically is exosomes. Exosomes are not allowed here in Switzerland, but mm. I'm very keen on getting my hand to them. And I think they will be soon allowed at least for needling because what I'm basically trying to do is um, I always try to improve a treatment. So microneedling itself is good. You combine it with other stuff, it gets better. So on the skin basis, I think exosomes is something that is really exciting. Of course, the hyperbaric chamber, I basically want all my clients to go into the hyperbaric chamber basically before I even start treating them because it does so much. It really, it releases stem cells yeah. and we, we need stem cells. We lose our, our stem cells, lose their function. They're getting lazy. They don't do anything and we need more stem cells. And, um, so I think that is one of the exciting fields that is coming up in aesthetic. And yes, the hyperbaric chamber for me is right now one of the things that I think is really good in overall anti-aging because it does everything. It lowers inflammation. It, it works on a lot of fields that we want to improve from the inside. Yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree. You know, that's uh, I was talking to um, Chris, uh, Christian Darpo, which has a wonderful company. It's called Caliagen. They have... St- uh, stem cell promoting supplement, which I which I use. I'm I'm surprised how how much I like it. To be honest with you, um, uh, it's called Stem Regen, and um, and um, you know, obviously he's he's the stem cell guy. So that's what he cares about. He's like, oh, that's all you need to to, to improve your health. But it's really that that balance of how do we improve the function of the cells that we already have, which are the majority. But also, how do we supplement that with new cells coming and kind of, you know, having their opti- the, 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 their the height of their uh, or the golden age of their uh, performance right in the beginning? So, yeah, I, I agree with you that that um, this is this is a dance that that uh, will be the, the future of of uh, skin longevity, skin rejuvenation, etc. I ca- I can tell you, I'm very excited uh, for for uh, you your institute to play around with our. Uh, formulations where when we make them as i told you in the you know not on air uh your your facility is really that that um that that shining light that we aimed um we we aim to work with when we create uh, uh, products that that's kind of we make products kind of for you so i really super appreciate uh the fact that you that you are um, that you gave us uh, your time today and, and, and had this conversation with me. Yes, I, I really do love your product and I use them wherever I can. And I basically also incorporate them into my needling. I use basically your mask, you will love that, for mm-hmm. healing and it works wonderfully. And you just can put it on top uh, when you heal the clients, they go home, sleep with it. And the other day, uh, the Skin is already looking way better than it they did than it did when they left the clinic. So it's uh, really it, it's great products. And uh, if I would have a wish, then I would wish that you do uh, microneedling. Um, how I can say uh, infusion <laughs> for me that I could needle into your skin with NAD boosters like you had in the cream. Of course, I put the cream also on top after the micro needling, but of course, I would like to get it into the skin. That would be my dream. <laughs> and so, a so cocktail. Your... I'm looking for a cocktail with your senolytics, with the NAD, with the resveratrol, and I would love to needle that into the skin. So that so, would be. I mean, I'm all spoiling yeah, that anyway, but. Uh, Still, I need it in my skin. Also, <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 getting there slowly. Uh, it's it's going to take a while, but but we're aiming at there. Listen, uh, Daniela, I I really love this conversation. Uh, I would love to do another one in the future um, um, when maybe we when we come out with something new and kind of uh, do an on air uh, 
brainstorming on how you can use it in clinic. But I, first of all, um, uh, obviously, we're going to have in our show notes all the information how to reach out to you. If, if anyone's in Europe uh, or in the U.S. and they want like a, 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 a top of the line place to, to take care of their longevity and their skin, um, I could not recommend your, your facility enough. We're going to have all the information in the show notes. I uh, super, super, super appreciate the time that you gave us today, Daniela. Thank you, Amitai. Thank you for your time. And I always love to exchange ideas with you. Yes. All right. Thank you and, and have a good one. Take care. Have a good time. Bye bye.